Good morning, Atonement. <laughs> Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. We have switched to our one service Sunday, uh, 9.15 for a while until we roll back into the fall. But uh, we're very, very glad to have you here today. We will gather with an opening song from many years ago, but you might know this one. Please rise and join in singing. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. You may be seated. It is so good to have you here today. God is good all, all the, the time. time. All the time. It's good. It is good to have you here. We've got some friends from my congregation in Lake City, Minnesota, Thorne and Naomi Mangold. So good to have you out here. Yeah. <laughs> I want to just lift up a few announcements uh, coming up on Thursday at 1 o'clock will be the service for Tina Williams, our memorial service here. So please uh, join Doug and the family as we celebrate her life. Somebody asked me uh, this last week, um, Tina would always come up and make her announcements with those crazy hats on. And they said, can we wear crazy hats or would that be disrespectful? And I said, I think it would be disrespectful if we didn't. So if you've got a crazy hat, do wear one to the service coming up on Thursday at 1. National Night Out is coming up on August 3rd. Uh, Atonement Lutheran will be hosting uh, a community gathering for the fast-growing neighborhood just to the north of us and, and the surrounding area. Um, we're going to have the mayor, city council members be able to speak. We're trying to arrange for some... Uh, emergency service vehicles to be here. We've got some inflatables, bouncy houses, food cars. Uh, we do need some volunteers. Uh, there's a sign-up board right outside the window there. And if you signed up before and you discover that my name isn't on the board anymore, well, there was a small child that came in one day and thought that it would be really fun to erase that board. So if you had your name on the board, it wasn't us that erased that. So please put your name back on the board. Um, just right outside the windows there. Following our service, we'll be having coffee hour. Uh, we'll just be gathering out in the shady side of the building right through these doors. So following worship, just follow the coffee cart as it rolls right out the doors and join us out there for some conversation and fellowship and coffee. Nikki. Good morning. So I want to thank everybody that donated to the spare change. Um, I did not get a total for that. I meant to get that to announce this morning, but I will get that announced. Um, so thank you guys that brought in all the change and the paper money that made all the noise. Um, our next upcoming fundraiser we're going to be doing, um, it'll be available. I'll have it. I'll get it online this week. But we do have flyers um, out there in the entryway. There's a youth bulletin board. And there's some flyers you can take with information. We're going to be, um, there's going to be a family mini session um, photo shoot. And you can sign up to get pictures um, for that. And then that'll, it's $75, five photos. Um, and all the details are on these flyers out front. And that'll all go towards helping send um, the kids to the National Youth Gathering next summer. So, right, thank you. 
Any other announcements to lift up at this time? I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who, who turn their hearts to you. Truly, Truly your, your salvation, salvation is very near to those, those who fear you, you that, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Lord be with you. Please join with me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning again. <laughs> See some kids, a couple of kiddos. If anybody wants to come, I think we can just spread out and still be good. If some kids, <laughs> I see head shaking also, so maybe not. <laughs> I like all of you guys, but it's nice to have kids up here. <laughs> I'll sit down too. All right. So, good morning. How are you guys this morning? Good. I'm glad you're here. So, I have a question. Have you guys ever had your friends or maybe 
siblings or cousins kind of do something that you knew you probably shouldn't do, but you went along and did it anyways because they were? Or maybe see something that you thought, oh, that looks fun, but I might get in trouble, but I'm going to do it anyways? I think we've all kind of done, yeah, I see some nodding and some grinning there. Yeah, so we've all, I think, even as grown-ups, we get ourselves into trouble because something, someone else is doing something, and sometimes it's hard to say no. Those things happen to all of us. But I think it's important when we, we have to kind of listen to our heart when we know something is wrong. But it can be tough. So when you see someone doing something, you want to join in, or maybe they ask you and you don't know how to tell them no. So when these things happened, when, and I know I got into trouble because usually your parents, they catch on, and, and I would get into trouble. My, but I would say, well, everybody was doing it. My friends are doing it. I didn't have a choice, right? Maybe sometimes it feels like we don't have a choice. Or I didn't do it, but my parents would tell me we all have a choice, right? So we have to take responsibility. Do you guys know what that means? Responsibility, you probably maybe hear that. <laughs> So it just means we have, to, we have to own our actions. We have our own choices. No one else can make those choices for us. Yeah. So this week's gospel story is, is kind of almost a scary story. It's kind of a hard story. It's not like the ones we usually hear, that we get to hear about Jesus and the lessons that he taught. This one is kind of hard to hear, even for grown-ups. So there's this king, his name is King Herod, and this is what the, le- the story is about today. Do you re- recognize that name? <laughs> so he has this birthday party, and he's having this, lots of people, and he has a daughter there who her gift, she is a, she's going to do a really cool dance for him. So she does this dance, and she's so good at it, and he's so proud of her that he says, you can have anything you want. What would you guys ask for if you could have anything you want? Probably, yeah, love, yeah. Probably something fun and that makes you feel good, right? Well, she asked for something really bad, something terrible. She asked for somebody to be killed, and that is a horrible thing to ask for. And what would you think he would tell her? He should tell her no, right? Yeah, you wouldn't. Why would you do that? Well, he doesn't because he promises her anything she asks for. So he does. He has a man killed, which is a terrible thing. So this is a sad hard story to hear, kind of so sad that sometimes if you hear it, you might think, well, what can we learn from this? Because it's just not a very good feeling story like we're used to with the gospel lessons. So I think that if we can learn something from this, it would be to have the courage to follow our heart and we have Jesus, you know, guiding us and telling us what is right and what is wrong And we all have that little voice in our head. We know, you guys probably know, when you're about to do something that you're going to get in trouble for. Do you ever hear that little voice? It's like, "Uh uh-oh, we shouldn't do this. Yeah? (laughs) So that little voice can help us. That's our heart. That's That's what we know. It helps us choose what's right and wrong. And Jesus is there in our heart guiding us. So I think the lesson from this is to, to, you know, have follow our heart and follow Jesus when we make those choices and to not feel pressured to do something that we know is wrong. So let's say a prayer. Dear God, Dear God sometimes we are faced with hard choices. Fill us with the wisdom and strength to do the right thing even when it's hard. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can go sit back down. (laughs) Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel this morning comes to us from the sixth, sixth chapter of the gospel of Mark, beginning in verse 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Just a preface, um... Jesus comes back to his hometown of Nazareth and preaches and uh, receives rejection. So he sends 12 disciples out into the community to do some ministry, and they are received with great acclaim. 
King Herod heard of the work of the disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. For this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to John. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask of me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. We're going to see if I get my graphics up here. We're beginning some conversation here at Atonement about the impact of COVID on the life of not only our congregation, but on churches and ministries really across the country. While we are but one church among all of those across our nation and world, it's still up to us to figure out a path forward into our future. But first, let me start with today's gospel reading. It's telling us about a crisis in the early followers of Jesus. Upon the beheading of John the Baptist, questions about the identity and authenticity of the ministry of Jesus emerged. Not only among those who opposed him, but even among Jesus' closest disciples. The fear and worry by King Herod of this new movement of Jesus and his followers even evoked doubts in the minds of Jesus' own disciples. 
Would that larger-than-life character of King Herod disrupt and bring to an end this emerging kingdom of God that Jesus was proclaiming? The question in the minds of the disciples was, would God's mission fail? Well, who could have imagined that a microscopic virus causing so much disruption in our world, in our lives, and in our churches would occur? Weariness and grief, uncertainty, and even division have gone viral as we struggle to recover. So what long-term impact of COVID-19 will have on this congregation? The questions that we have today are not too different from the questions the early followers of Jesus wrestled with as they faced the disruptive powers of King Herod. That answer largely depends upon our attitude and the spirit of us as a congregation as we approach this crisis. Prior to 2020, congregational statistics were already grim. For the past 20 years, research has shown that 80 to 90 percent of the churches in the U.S. were either plateaued or declining. Mind you, that is among all churches, mainline churches, non-denominational, every one of them. Additionally, 3,500 to 4,000 congregations were closing every year. It's about 10 per day. David Kinneman, president of the Barna Group, a faith-based research organization, recently reported that as many as one in five congregations in the U.S. could close their doors permanently as a result of COVID-19. And many more struggle just to kind of stay on life support. Based on statistics, most congregations have been facing a sustainability crisis for generations. A pre-COVID study of chronic decline in average worship attendance in the ELCA projected that if the current rate of decline is not turned around, the total average weekly attendance in ELCA churches will plummet from 899,000 per week in 2017 to a dismal 15,811 in 2041. These numbers are similar in all other denominations and congregations as well. And that number does not factor in COVID. So I am inviting each and every one of you here today into some conversation. We're doing a series, it's called Thriving Beyond COVID. It's a three-session scripture-based regathering and renewal resource, and it was assembled by Jeff Lindman, who's a pastor and a mission developer. These conversations are intended to not only keep our congregation from being among the 20% who may close, 
and they'll keep us from struggling to stay off of life support. It's designed to help us turn this crisis into an opportunity for us to thrive. In two of its definitions for crisis, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary connects crisis with opportunity. The turning point for better or worse and the defining moment. The Chinese character for crisis captures that connection really well, danger and opportunity. Albert Einstein, known for his wisdom, uh, knew this connection as well. In the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity, said Albert Einstein. Well, our conversations, this thriving beyond COVID will provide tools for us to help embrace this crisis as an opportunity so that we can live out that mission that's stated in Romans chapter 8, that God makes all things work together for good. Beyond this crisis, is opportunity. The byproduct of church decline has been a steady rise in the levels of fear and worry present in our congregations regarding our future. It's what those early disciples faced at the beheading of John the Baptist. When fear and worry get the best of us, things spiral downhill from there. The toxic fruit of fear and worry is doubt, which then undermines this power of faith that you need to move mountains. Fear and worry and doubt. We're at high levels in most congregations prior to COVID-19. But they have gone viral in this past year, rising to dangerous pandemic levels in many places right now. This pandemic fear needs to be addressed right here, right now. As we're talking about our regathering, our renewal plans, all of those plans that we make for resuming life in mission and ministry as a church. When Peter was sinking, do you remember that story? Peter was sinking. He cried out to Jesus for help. It would be good for us to do the same thing right now. And it would also be wise to listen to Jesus. There's a reason that Jesus told his followers 24 times or more not to be afraid, not to worry, not to doubt. When these emotions invade our corporate spirit, like a virus left untreated, They eat away at our church's vitality. And it hinders our ability to thrive. The good news is, and you're probably waiting for that, the good news is that the viruses of fear, worry, and doubt are vulnerable to the light of Christ shining in the darkness. Sharing our fears, sharing our worries, sharing our doubts, getting that out there is that essential first step in being set free from its power. 
once that step is taken, they can be exercised from our spirits so that God's spirit becomes that driving force that awakens and empowers our dreams and helps us to overcome challenges and embrace new opportunities. As we journey on this path, of thriving beyond COVID. It's all about us getting in the right frame of mind so that you can see beyond this crisis to an unprecedented opportunity to move beyond death to resurrection. That's what we're all about, right? Resurrection in the church. So it's time this summer for us to start kind of an exciting journey. A journey for us to let go of what is holding us back. To trust God to empower our dreams. To rise up. To embrace our opportunities. So here's our schedule. Of when we're going to be having these conversations here at Atonement. So I invite you all to stick around following worship because these discussions, they're not just going to be a lecture or a sermon, but it's going to be conversation for all of us. That's going to invite the participation of everyone. So if you have friends from other churches and they are not talking about this, it's really important. If you have friends from other churches not discussing this, invite them to come along. Maybe this will be a blessing for their ministries. Because it isn't just for our congregation. This is really for the greater church. In the words of a wise high school teacher portrayed by Robin Williams in that movie Dead Poet Society, it is time for us to carpe diem, to seize the day, to take advantage of this crisis, and to make our church extraordinary with God's help. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Our song of the day will be on the screen. The spirit moves the body to go. The heart responds and hands unfold. Where on this road will we arrive? The journey begins with sacrifice. You are the cornerstone through new and old. The monster that guides us all. Jesus. 
Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon your beloved church, lavish your wisdom upon us, and redeem us from our faults, that by our witness all might praise your glory. Lord of love, we pray for this holy house and all those who worship here. We pray especially for those whose efforts behind the scenes often go unnoticed, for the custodian and property workers, for our office staff, and for all of our volunteers. Awesome Creator, you steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Still the storms that bring devastation, bring life-giving rains to places in drought. Spring up green growth from the earth, nourish the growth of fruit, grain, and other crops, and bless the work of farmers and laborers. God of the oppressed, turn the ears of those who are in power to the voices of prophets in our own day. Protect those who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty. Comfort all who are survivors of violence, guard the refugee and the immigrant, 
and protect all those who are victims of prejudice and discrimination. This week, we pray for those who are sick, recovering from surgery, living in loneliness, or those nearing death. We especially pray for Darlene, the mother of Kim Anderson. We also pray for Atonement members Kathy, Tom and Janie, Donna and Maria, Alma and Ron. We lift up their prayers of need and thanksgiving, which are known to you. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace with one another in a safe way. What a great spirit this morning. We'll be celebrating communion. If you did not yet grab one of those individual serving portions, we do have some available in the back. Um, if you didn't grab one, maybe an usher. Raise your hand if you didn't grab one. Usher can get that to you. We got a few back here. So. Just a... Uh, a little bit of information beforehand. Uh, after the words of institution in the Lord's Prayer, um, that'll be the time that we open those communion packets. I'll let you know uh, when to peel those layers back. We got some over here as well. So. Thank you. We remember the night in which our Lord was betrayed. When he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. All is ready. At this time, you can peel back that layer that will reveal the wafer. the body of Christ given for you. 
And now that layer for the wine or the grape juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. May his peace be yours. Amen. Well, I invite you to stand for our benediction as we go on our way. And again, we'll have some coffee available right through the doors out there in the shady part of uh, our lawn there. The way is long. Let us go together. The way is difficult. Let us help each other. The way is joyful. Let us share it. The way is Christ's. Let us follow. The way is open before us. Let us go. With the love of God and the grace of Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. and serve the Lord. We bring the hope we share in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God.